A lot of mental health professionals, they hide behind the chair, if you mm -hmm. will. They, they hide and they basically won't even show who they are. They won't have personal effects in the office, all kinds of things. But we as mental health professionals, I don't know that we have a duty to share all those things, but we have a duty to our own mental health to be authentic. The way that I practice is that I self-disclose, like we gotta go on this journey together. And if, yeah. it, if it's therapeutically appropriate, I'm not just gonna be like, well girl, wait till you hear my story. You think yours is bad and they, you know, take over the session, but <laughs> you ain't going through anything. You need to leave. Uh, let me tell you about me. No, it's just I try to share whenever I can identify and they're like, you get it. I get it, I get it, I, 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 I get it, you know? And it just helps them feel more comfortable like, oh, you're not perfect because, you know, Mental health is, is really taken off now, and you know, people may put you here, so they think you're like perfect or something, and then when you start sharing this stuff, you're like, oh, you're like me. I'm like, we're all like you. We all gone through something. It's just some people have been trained in the culture, their culture, cultural background, or just the culture of their home trains them to not process any emotions, and that's a weakness, and you're supposed to show up and like be a robot and just play your role and get by, but that's how we end up with infidelity, that's how we end up with murders, that's how we end up with depression, all that stuff, because people are not expressing any of that or healing any of that or letting any of that out. It's just like all bottled up to like here. It's one of the most terrible myths that are affecting mental health is that belief that somehow you should not be authentic, you should not express emotion, you should not feel. Um, we are meant to use emotion. Emotion is actually a good thing. Emotion is something that helps us take action. Emotion is help, something that helps us process, it helps us to think, it helps us to plan, it gives us energy, or takes away our energy. Or even if like, let's say, you know, people who have seasonal affective disorder, if they become very sad and they stay inside, if they live in a snowy environment, maybe that's adaptive. And the myth somehow, especially in America, that having emotion is bad or wrong, actually makes people more emotional. You played me some of your music, mm -hmm. which was incredible. Thank you. I mean, uh, your voice is incredible and the lyrics were incredible. I mean, how did you discover your voice? I mean, not just the singing voice, but the um, poetry that you wrote. Works abated from my sins, consecrated for his glory. My story be from a glory to lowly, but now it's glory filled. I can never do it by myself. He was there when I needed help. You really love me, boy, why can't I succeed? Your heart's full of anger, toxicity, and greed. We are at Clear Lake Studios, and um, I'm here with my good musical friend. He has been helping me through this musical journey, uh, Matt. Matt, uh, say what's up. What's up? Am I visible? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so he's been helping me. He helps with, like, he's like part of my writing team, what I would call my writing team, and... Um, like we put the songs through the ringer and you know, they help me like make sure the verbiage is right and whatever it is that I'm trying to portray is actually in, conveyed in, in the lyrics um, and the lyrics telling the story that I wanted to tell. So uh, he tweaks things, he helps with vocal arranging the, the, the vocals uh, and making sure that things are clean and concise and that harmonies and, and, and things make sense. So it's really awesome that I get to 
uh, record with him. You know, I've been trying to record with him since last summer, but the pandemic happened, so we paused everything. And he's basically, I think, early opened him up because he said it wasn't going to start till June for me. So I'm very appreciative of that, and I get to record with him, so I'm excited. So um, it's kind of like being with your vocal coach, <laughs> so to speak. You know, that's tracking your vocals, so that's the best, you know, scenario that you can have. Um, so we're gonna try to get as many songs done as we can. There's 21 songs. I've recorded some with uh, King Lab Ox, that's Darren Billy Jr. He got a, a Grammy for some production with Gary Clark Jr. Um, for the 2019 uh, song, This Land. Um, so I just have like a, a, a great team of people, uh, super talented people, and I really have just really been blessed on this Tina Rick's music project. Um, we've got writers that have been helping on the writing team from all around the world, from Antigua. We've got producers that's done some of the Afrobeat music. We've got uh, Nigerians. We've got um, Island. We've got uh, London, uh, United Kingdom, and then some people here in the States and, and, and locally. So uh, in Texas, local is Austin, Texas for me. So yeah, we're out here in LA doing our thing. And uh, I'm about to go get in the vocal booth. And uh, we're going to try to do like some interludes first. So we try to get as many songs done as we can got here late <laughs> from a photo shoot uh, on Rodeo Drive. So um, yeah, we're gonna try to do as many songs as we can and I might have a day two to try to get in as much as I can with my, you know, music coach. I think I discovered it through working on this project and just, you know, hearing other people's stories and hearing them share and, you know, knowing that I had a story and just, you know, when everyone else is sharing it, if yours is way worse than everyone else's story, but like it, so much trauma is there, but it just made me more comfortable actually sharing that trauma out in the, just putting it out there. And like writing becomes easier because you're being completely authentic with your feelings and you're being okay with whatever comes of the song and whatever you write. And then, you know, trying to turn that into something that, you know, is telling a story and that people can visualize and conceptualize and kind of see and feel. When I started the documentary, filming that, I also started music at the same time. I started both back up and uh, just, it's like a renaissance really. It's like a new person was rebirthed out of the divorce and just, I just really became me. I love mental health and I love helping other people, but there's a part of me that is just not active and I don't want it to be that way. And I don't want to have to choose this or that. So I merged the two together and went out on a mission. I'm like, we're gonna merge these two together and we're gonna make this cool. <laughs> we're gonna make it cool to heal and to express ourselves and to be ourselves and to bring and incorporate our talents into our professions. I don't care what you do, you can incorporate some of that cre creative side into everything. If you're a coach, if you're an athlete, if you're a geophysicist, neurobiologist, whatever you are, you know, you can incorporate all of the things that you're good at into what you do. And it's just kind of like living this uh, eclectic lifestyle. You just do you, be you. But has that helped you? Absolutely, 100%, 100%. I'm not depressed anymore. So, you know, I think anyone that's been through a lot of trauma or they're finding themselves stuck or keep ending up in like these abusive cycles with friends, coworkers, um, love relation, romantic relationships, I, I think that they really need to really take a step back and really look and see what's unhealed. Something's wrong here. Something is really wrong and, and, and I need to go back and I need to fix that so I can move on with my life and be happy. We do have to go, you know, that's where if we lean into our emotions, we actually can heal through our process. I want people to feel loved and cared about, mm -hmm. and I want people to know that whether I have achieved a certain amount of income or some kind of success in any area of life, that I'm never gonna stop. I'm always gonna keep coming back for you. I'm never gonna go away. I mean, somebody cares. Somebody cares that's not up in the sky, like somebody right here cares. And I know I'm not the only one. I'm never gonna stop. I won't venture too far, but you said what you want to give to other people is love and understanding. Mm -hmm. But isn't that something that you wanted? I'm projecting what I need onto them. So I'm giving them the, the, the thing that I want them to give me, yeah. hoping that I get it back. So that's why I say I'm, I'm always ever changing and going through the process because I believe that the inner child is, she's doing better, but she's probably not healed all the way. Probably still some more work to do. I don't know, you know, I don't know that someone's inner child ever really heals. I think that I think they do heal to a certain extent, but in a certain way I want to say your inner child 
I always feel like what we can do with our inner child is sort of hold its hand and help them through. Because the inner child is going to, you know, hold our trauma, it's going to hold our past, it's going to hold our feelings and our emotions. Um, and as adults, the adult us, the adult Tina and Greg, we want to be able to hold that child's hand to guide it through, to not have it run our lives, you know, mm -hmm. but actually to soothe it and help to soothe it, to pull it through. But I think the inner child's always going to have some pain. It's always going to scream out, and it's always going to, you know, engage, want to engage in bad habits. Yeah, it's like, see, you did it to me again. <laughs> and you would hurt me or something like that. And it's like, I, I definitely don't do that. Like, if I get hurt, I'm like, well, there's still more work I need to do because that person shouldn't have been able to hurt me. That's how I see it. I never, like, blame them. I'm like, there's something going on still that's still not okay. You see, well, that that would concern me for you in the sense that... Like I'm being I too hard on myself? I think so. Cause you're, I'm super hard on myself. Because <laughs> that's, that's not compassionate. I'm not that compassionate Toward with yourself. I'm not. And I think ultimately we need to be compassionate toward ourselves. It's like I love myself, but I'm really hard on myself. Like, come on, you got, you got, it's like, a, I treat myself like a soldier. And it's like, all right, you've had enough time to rest. You've got time to process that thing. And hey, you got to get back out there. We got stuff to do. I mean, that happens and it's okay. If you get knocked down, you know, it's okay to be, have been knocked down. It's not your fault. You know, the people can run up behind you and knock you down. But if you just stay down and then say, look at, see, and not get back yeah, up. Yeah, like, look what they did to me. Yeah, you could actually you could actually start to do yourself in. I mean, people will feel sorry for you for having been knocked down. But I don't think it's wrong that one is victimized or that one remembers that. Because um, that pain and that part of our past helps us to continue to grow and not make the same mistakes. But man, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say you should be anything because the should implies wrong, like somehow you did something wrong. Everything in my life broke down and I just started to just let things go that weren't healthy for me, even in my business, like everything died. So like the old Tina died and kind of resurrected first and then everything else that was in my life died too. So now everything is like new. But I think, you know, as a mental health person, I don't know how you feel about this, but I feel like, and it sounds like you do have this philosophy by all that you've said, is that we have to help people to heal. Like we have to help them toward a better goal. When we just say someone's all bad or all good and just try to it. write them off. I just can't do it. You know, the whole goal is just to help people heal and find their, find what's going on and go on their journey of healing. Just follow your heart, make it for yourself, you know? The man in the mirror is the only person you have to impress, right? Don't be too hard on yourself, and don't expect things to happen tomorrow. How do you set yourself up five years from now? You always gotta have a plan, A, B, C, D, E, G, and F. You are an important person. There's a lot wrong with the world right now, but making music has to be part of the solution.
Tequila shots between. <laughs> Stop it. He doesn't drink like that. <laughs> Yet. Yeah. I like it. Do it good. I want you to get more energy. Like. Yeah. I want you to act like there's three. Three. Uh, uh, yes. Belly dancers back there. Say, no, baby. Go, baby. Three no, shots baby. right there. Go. Three <laughs> shots and three, and three belly dancers. Yo, yo, yo. I'm supposed to really be singing though? <laughs> it don't matter. You can just lip sing it. Or... There you go. Sing for real? Okay. <laughs> Hello, my name is Tina Ricks. Hello, what's up? How are you? All right, let me start over. Like I tried to tell people, right? I know, right? He's like, well, hello, family. How are you guys? Okay. Ready to go? Acting begin. It's slow on mine. Well, it's just too hard to believe it. Yeah. Don't worry, don't worry. You're going to be fine. You look great. You look great. You're like it in my friend. This is Taryn. This is my daughter that I had when I was 16. Here here she is. Tell, tell them about yourself, Taryn. You're in college now. You're at Texas State. Mama's bought you a car. Mama put you on her uh, platinum credit card and she's got better credit than me now, right? Uh-huh, yeah, so she's doing great and uh, she's very helpful. She does like a lot of admin stuff for me. 